And is channel 15 you all set up? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. So thank you for coming everyone during the budget interlude. Uh, my name is Robert Craig, Executive Director of Citizen Action Wisconsin. I'm going to say a couple of very brief things about what this bill is and then hand it over to the uh, bill author and go from there and a series of speakers. But as we know, in the last election, it appeared there was a consensus because both parties said deductibles were too high, premiums were too high for health care, and both promised uh, solutions, uh, moving beyond the Affordable Care Act or repealing it. And as you all know, we're also in the middle of this torturous repeal process where both the House plan and now the Senate plan are under tremendous pressure because they do not follow through on that promise at all. In fact, they dramatically raise premiums and costs, shifting them on to average people. And so U.S. senators throughout the country are, are carrying an earful over the July 4th recess about this to the extent they're having town hall meetings at all. What we need to understand is, is that there's a lot the state level can do. And so in Wisconsin, there is no reason we can't dramatically reduce co-pays, deductibles, premiums. And so if you look at, and this is what Representative Genrich's bill does, if you look at Badger Care, it's a very popular program. It's very successful. We have everything set up as far as provider networks. Uh, as has been proposed in states like Minnesota or Nevada, you could create a buy-in where Badger Care is both a public option on the Affordable Care Act marketplace, and anyone could buy into it at cost. And once you do that, and the Legislative Fiscal Bureau confirms this, it is dramatically cheaper because you are cutting out the health insurance company middlemen and because it's a very efficient program. So the Fiscal Bureau, by the way, presumes in their paper a 15% administrative cost for the state, which is probably quite high. Medicare goes at 3%. But even given that number, which is probably an overestimate, literally it would save in terms of deductibles and premiums an average of 30% in the state of Wisconsin for across counties. Now this is for a 40 year old and it's going to differ by county and by what someone's age is. So I'm giving you a rough estimate. But that's how much cheaper it is in general. So while going from costing someone $9,386 a year currently for a silver plan for a 40 year old to $7,224 uh, and with Badger Care, buying into Badger Care and it would be eligible for the tax credits on the marketplace, either the ones under the Affordable Care Act or the replacement ones under the House or Senate bill. So it would be even cheaper for anyone under 40% of poverty in the Affordable Care Act and in the House bill or 350% in the Senate bill. So the main point here is, is that we can use our democratic government, our democracy, to make health care more affordable, accessible, if we'll simply take the right steps. This costs the government in the state of Wisconsin nothing, no extra money. And it is much more efficient and a lot better than private health insurance, and certainly people should have the option, especially as we have big gargantuan for-profit healthcare corporations like Blue Cross threatening people's coverage and pulling out of the state. They're a small percentage of the market right now, but we shouldn't be held ourselves hostage to that. Everyone should have the choice of Badger Care in every single county in Wisconsin. And this state legislature can do this immediately. It's a very simple bill. And with that, we're going to have a series of speakers. I want to start with the, uh, the author of the bill, uh, Representative Eric Genrich from Green Bay. So thank you very much, Eric. Well, thanks so much, Robert, for that introduction. And thanks uh, to everyone for coming out today. Um, this is really a bill that was born out of a conversation that, that I had with, uh, with Robert and Kevin from Citizen Action, but also, also with uh, local advocates who are involved with uh, Northeast Wisconsin organizing cooperative uh, with Citizen Action. Um, so I'm Eric Genrick. As was said, I'm the state representative for the 90th Assembly District and ranking Democratic member of the Assembly Insurance Committee, which is really why I feel a particular obligation to wade into the ongoing debate about the health care access, affordability, and quality issues that we're facing across this country and state. So we're here today to offer a homegrown Wisconsin solution to individuals and businesses seeking affordable, high-quality health insurance. In terms of affordability, as Robert said, 30% less than the typical silver plan on the exchange for an average 40-year-old in Northeast Wisconsin. In terms of quality, no network restrictions. So at a time when politicians in Washington are meeting behind closed doors about the future of health care, we're having a public conversation about our needs as Wisconsinites. As private insurers raise rates and lose interest in participating in the Affordable Care Act, we're offering a common sense, affordable, high quality solution. And that is a Badger Care option for all. Badger Care for individuals, the self employed, and small businesses. Badger Care for all who need it. 
Under our plan, BadgerCare would be treated like any other insurance plan available on the federal exchange for individuals and small businesses. But it would be more affordable and more comprehensive than most other plans. And it would be able to hold down the cost of pres prescription drugs that continue to skyrocket. So as Governor Walker, Senator Johnson, and our Congressman Gallagher consider the finer points of health care discrimination, we reject that way of thinking, and we reject that way of governing. We all have a pre-existing condition, and it's the human one. <laughs> we're all blessed and afflicted in the same way, and we're all in this together. The failure to recognize that common bond is what has doomed the Republican effort to offer a viable alternative to the Affordable Care Act. Now, I want to be clear that the Affordable Care Act should be, and can be, much more affordable. But we can't achieve that goal in a humane way if we turn over the reins to those who have denied coverage to our fellow citizens, our friends, and our neighbors. We must grab the reins ourselves as elected officials and citizens, patients and doctors. So that's why I'm here, along with the bill's citizen and legislative supporters, to announce this legislation. But this press conference does not mark the end of this effort. It's my hope that Badger Care for All and solutions like it will be debated and discussed in these halls and around the country. Similar ideas have been suggested in Minnesota and also in the Nevada legislature. So it's my hope that our gubernatorial and senatorial candidates on both sides of the aisle will be asked to take a stand on this question. Because the stakes are too high, the consequences too immense for us to leave this decision to a few lobbyists and politicians in Washington. So thanks for joining us today. I'll now t turn things over to one of our co-authors, Senator Dave Hansen. Well, good afternoon. Thanks for coming out on this beautiful, beautiful summer day. A lot nicer in here than outside. Yeah. But it's great to see, great to see so many people here. And a lot is being said today about the changes coming under the GOP plan, about the millions who lose their health insurance, and about how it would be much more expensive for those who are older or sick. And I just pulled some numbers off this morning. Under Trump Care or Ryan Care or whatever you want to call it, the average consumer's insurance premiums would go up 74%, and at age 55 to 64, premiums would increase. Just the premiums, 115%. So it's so important for us to be talking about what we're talking about today. And then besides that, you hear on Trump Care, $800 billion tax cut to medical assistance, a $600 billion cut to the wealthy, the wealthiest, and a total of $1 trillion total tax cut. To me, that means we got to do what we got to do in this state, and that is to provide this option, Badger Care. So a lot has been said about the increasing costs for middle class families. We believe that every resident of our state deserves to have affordable, quality and accessible health care regardless of their income and that is possible to achieve that goal. It can happen. That's why I'm happy to be here with Representative Genrick. He explained it so well and to talk about his plan, Badger Care for All. Badger Care for All. No matter who you are or how much money you make, under this plan you would have the option to buy into Badger Care, the state's bipartisan plan bipartisan plan that is popular, successful, and cost-effective. It works because the state can use its buying power to negotiate lower drug prices, and we know how that is in our, in our country and in our state, and services. This means lower out-of-pocket costs and lower premiums. BadgerCare already covers hundreds of thousands of people across our state, so it's tested and we know it works. It's time to come to Wisconsin and get this done and to provide that option. Thank you. I'm going to uh, welcome up Representative David Crawley. Let me say one quick thing, and that is you may be asking with Medicaid, what if they go to this per capita cap and they cut it 25 to 35 percent, say in the Senate, this doesn't have any effect on that because the, the person pays or the tax credit pays. And so the, even though we were very much opposed to uh, draconian cuts in Medicaid, this could, program can go forward either way, even under the Republican bills. Mm -hmm. So Representative Crawley, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for everybody for being here to help us introduce this important legislation. In recent years, the city of Milwaukee has been uh, 
has been accomplished, the, uh, the accomplished city to see the most signups under the Affordable Care Act. Because of the Affordable Care Act, thousands of people now have access to health coverage that previously were under or uninsured. Badger Care for All would build upon the progress, even though it's not perfect, the progress that we have made under the Affordable Care Act and improve the quality and affordability of the insurance available to Wisconsin citizens. Creating this public option will give many residents access to more health care options, not only in Milwaukee, but for, our, for, for all of Wisconsin, including our northern brothers and sisters who have no options. Badger Care for All would provide the necessary health care access in these communities where coverage is not offered. As elected officials, we have the ability and therefore the responsibility to ensure a basic level of health care security for Wisconsin families, but also for entrepreneurs. That is why I'm proud to stand here today with my colleagues to support this bill. And uh, thank you all for being here. Thank you very much. I now want to welcome up Senator Chris Larson uh, from the Milwaukee area to talk about the bill. Thank you very much, Senator. Thank you, Robert. Uh, thank you all for being here. Thank you to uh, Citizen Action, uh, as well as the bill's authors, Representative Genrich and Senator Hansen, for introducing such a uh, piece of needed and common sense legislation. As um, national Republicans like Senator Johnson and uh, President Trump are seeking to shoulder people out of their health care in favor of offering huge tax cuts to uh, the richest among us, the people who don't need them. I think it's inherent upon us to look at what we can do as Wisconsinites, as leaders, uh, to do something that reflects on our values uh, to make sure that people are viewed as neighbors instead of dollar signs, uh, so that we are doing something common sense uh, that is able to offer them health care um, in a program that is already successful, already seen as a national model, um, and can very easily pick up uh, folks who are going to be cast aside if uh, Trump and the national Republicans uh, are able to get their way moving forward with their, their wealth care bill. Um, this is part of Wisconsin values, where we look at each other, we look out for our neighbors, uh, where we innovate and we do what's best um, for everybody. And it, it saves dollars. Um, for instance, when Walker decided uh, to play politics with the health of our neighbors, as everybody knows, by rejecting the opportunity to strengthen Badger Care these last few years, um, he refused to take the Medicaid expansion. It resulted in less of our neighbors having access to affordable coverage, but his scheme is also projected to cost us uh, $678.6 million uh, by the end of this year. Uh, to make matters worse, in both the House and Senate bills, non-expansion states like Wisconsin stand to lose billions of our dollars uh, to other states, um, and that continues to project into the future. So I think it's upon us uh, to do what's smart, to do what's common sense, and to uh, move forward with this uh, piece of legislation in a program that has had broad bipartisan support. Uh, we hope that uh, folks will view this through the lens of what's best um, for Wisconsin, what's best for everybody, and not just best for one party over the other. And I also want to acknowledge Representative Reamer is here with us today, Representative Brostoff is here with us today, and Representative Anderson are here with us today as well. And before we open it to questions, let me just conclude that in this whole debate in Washington and the non-debate here in Madison, because health care isn't even coming up really this session in a significant way, uh, there's this assumption that somehow there's some kind of market solution where if we jigger with this, that everyone will be able to get health care no matter what, that health care will be a right. When the fact of the matter is, is that the only actors in the system that care whether everyone can get health care no matter what are we the people. That is us, our elected government. And we are here in the Capitol Dome. This government could make a huge step if the politicians in this building who actually talk about premiums and co-pays being too high, deductibles being too high, cared about this for real and not just politicking, they would do this right away. This is a simple bill with no fiscal impact whatsoever. And by the way, no one would be forced to go into Badger Care. They could choose to pay 30% more for private, narrow network health insurance, wherever they are in the state. And so it would be up to the people, and they'd have a choice. And so this makes imminent sense, and the fact that it's not, that it, we'll see what happens with this bill, but if this is not scheduled for hearings, 
if this doesn't get scheduled for a vote, it'll be further evidence that the majority party here wants the health care system to collapse for political reasons and doesn't believe any of their protestations that they want to make health care affordable available to everyone. But if they want to work in a bipartisan way, you heard it today, everyone here would like to work across the aisle and do something that makes sense for people. And this would be a great start to move forward towards a system where everyone in Wisconsin had health care no matter what. And so with that, Let's, uh, we can open it up for any questions that the Fourth Estate may have. Thank you for sponsoring this bill. I just had one question, and that is, it, does the bill uh, prohibit employers from purchasing, like small employers who struggle to um, purchase health care for their employees, does it allow them to also go through Badger Care? It, it would, yeah. If small businesses are currently on the small business market, the exchange. Mm -hmm eligible for that, um, they would be eligible to purchase badge care under the bill. And as you know, about a third of small businesses in Wisconsin can afford health insurance right now, and the major reason they can is cost. So it's a huge impact for small business. Yeah, go ahead, Jason. I have a question for Representative Gingrich. Would you say that repeal and replace efforts in Congress have emboldened Democrats who want to see a, a public option or even a single payer uh, system? Yeah, I mean, just speaking personally, it certainly motivated me as a member of the Democratic Party to step forward and offer compelling solutions because as Robert said you know going up through the campaign and beyond um, you know Republicans I think offered some some fairly um, cogent critiques of, uh, of the affordability issues and some of the access issues that are ongoing in this country um, but the solutions that they provided mm -hmm. are completely inadequate and run counter to those problems so what we've decided to do is step into that void um, and to offer, you know, what we think is a is a compelling solution to some of those issues. Let's start with media, and then we can go to citizens. Any other reporters? How many people do you expect would buy into coverage across? That's a super good question. I think the <laughs> LFB didn't know basically. Yeah, they so. didn't provide any sort of an estimate as far as as who would buy in um, at cost. Um, under the bill, we, we're also seeking waivers to allow for, um, you know, subsidy support for those tax credits that Robert talked about uh, for people who are purchasing insurance uh, on the marketplace. We believe anecdotally that paying 30 percent less and having a, a, a basically a very broad network would be appealing. But you're right. Uh, there are other states that have proposed this. Nevada passed it in their legislature, but got vetoed by the governor. Governor Dayton of Minnesota has tried to do it. But we would be one of the first. Uh, but as I say, there's really no harm if, if no one wants to buy this. It's not going to cost the state so you any additional money. A portion of the 225,000 people on the exchange would, would probably shift to badge care if they had that option. I, I think yeah, so. I mean, you'd yeah. think there'd be a sizable number of people who would choose it. Yeah, that's our hope. So, any other reporters in the room that have a question? Otherwise, we can open it up to citizens. Oh, did you? Yeah. I have one further question. Uh, as a physician, um, the, it's a challenge to uh, accept Medicaid uh, Badger Care uh, clients because the reimbursement is low, as by design, because we're trying to rein in health care. Would there be negotiating if large numbers of people bought into this, which, which I view as a grassroots way toward a mm -hmm. single payer, which is great, but would there be negotiation possibility to raise some of those um, community uh, let me Let me respond quickly. That's entirely within the legislator's purview to set the rate. So they could adjust them. And what's driven Badger Care without opposition from the medical community all along is, is that it's better for them for someone to have a source of insurance than to be uninsured. And so there's that to figure, but you're, but absolutely the legislature could adjust the rates accordingly. Right, and, and you know we've called for uh, accepting those federal investments in Medicaid for some time now. Um, Representative Reamer has been a huge advocate of that. If we were to accept those dollars, obviously we could put those to use to improve reimbursement rates uh, across Medicaid. Thank you. Yes, sir. Have you explored whether there's any Republican interest in joining with you? Yeah, so we did circulate uh, the legislation to all legislators, regardless of party. Um, we have yet to, to find a Republican co-sponsor, but um, you know, as I said, this is the beginning of the conversation. It's not the end, so we're going to continue talking. And obviously, constituents have a bigger impact than colleagues. <laughs> so if constituents talk to them, they, they, they're interested in anything constituents are talking to them about. Right. If you don't see your representative up here, give them a call. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A concern that I have is um, $2,000 a year is still a lot of money, and there's still this dichotomy where public sector employees pay virtually nothing for health insurance, but, uh, but many residents of the state aren't that fortunate. And what can be done to achieve more equity in that? I mean, if it's possible to uh, give state employees who are a very large pool an attractive package, why isn't it possible to extend that to every resident of the state? Well, they pay what now, 14%? Is that the number? Or am I confusing that with the pension number, the WRS number? That, uh, right. So they're paying now. Uh, but uh, obviously, I mean, my reaction, maybe the representatives have different reactions, is that's why the tax credit system on the Affordable Care Act makes sense, because it's based on income and the cost of insurance to you. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we don't think it was generous enough. And that was one of the well-grounded critiques Representative Genrich was talking about. And so you could also deal with that <laughs> with Badger Care, because it, it would, it, it, if the waiver is approved, which it should be, uh, then those tax credits would apply to Badger Care as well. So I think that would be the most equitable to use the progressive mm -hmm. tax credit system. I don't know if anyone else has a thought on that. Okay. <coughs> yes. So you talked about the expansive networks that Badger Care has. Is there any data on the capacity of those networks to absorb what may be a flood of new enrollees? Yeah, I mean, that's not something that we've explored to this point, but, you know, as I said previously, um, you know, we're at the start of this, so as we continue to, to vet the legislation, you know, we'll have uh, more thorough fiscal estimates that will come through, and, and that hopefully will be a part of the discussion. And I would say there was an increase roughly in five percentage points under the Affordable Care Act of people insured in Wisconsin and no reports of a capacity issue. We think this is a great bill. We're not claiming it'll get us to 100%. It's a step in that direction. So I would say that the new enrollees is going to be less for this than you had with the Affordable Care Act, yeah. Yeah, most likely. Though if it gets to 100, we're, we're all we all think that's great. So <laughs> don't don't get me wrong. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Well, I think this is about doing what we've done in Wisconsin for decades. That is, and up until recently, and that is making government work. This is a really simple common sense solution that there should be no objection to whatsoever that could reduce people's premiums and deductibles by 30%. So it, the stunning thing is, is that there haven't been any side-ons yet, and I think that has to do with constituents talking to their legislators. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you for getting this going. I speak to you. I'm going to be